There's so many questions. If we asked every person who's on with us tonight and we asked them a question, everyone will have some story that they wish that they can change or something that's going on in their life that they wish it was not the way it was and even if we had the opportunity as bad as our situation may seem to feel to us as bad as it may be you still wouldn't exchange your problems for, with someone else because we are so contented with dealing with what we have to deal with. And I'll tell you why. It's because God has given you the capability and he's put that, that, that rod in your hand to deal with your situation. And that's why when you hear someone talking, you know, you, you look at yourself without really looking at yourself. And there's something, if you would examine yourself, there's something that's going on inside of you that breaks you. There's something that you want above everything else. If this can just change, if this situation can just I know it's going to get better. And then go and you sit and you speak with someone else and they start talking about their problems. And then you're like, all right, you know what? I think I need to relax myself a bit because um, I don't want that person's problems. And the reason why we can say that is nothing that we are dealing with in our life, nothing, absolutely nothing that is happening to you right now has anything to do with your capabilities. God will never put you through anything in your life that he has not already equipped and prepared you for. Because that is the God that we serve. And in our life, and, and I shared this before, and it is because it's a truth, a fact that, that we believe that Dr. Richards and myself, we were taught wrong as Christians going up. And it's not because the people who taught us um, deliberately did so. But what I believe is that their concept of what Christianity is um, and their zeal into trying to teach us the right things, it may have come across in a wrong way because people now start examining themselves. You know, if I don't have money, then I'm not blessed. If I'm sick, uh, then I'm not blessed. If I don't have certain things, then I'm not blessed. And unfortunately, it is the way that we were taught to think. And that is so far from the truth. Because if we want to go the kingdom principle way, if we want to go biblical way, we know for a guarantee, for a fact that that is not true. Because we all know that Jesus Christ left his glory. He left the wealth of heaven and he became poor so that we can be made rich. Jesus had nothing. He said, foxes have their hole, but I don't have anything on this earth. So if we want to say that we are only blessed when we have wealth, then something is wrong. That they're probably saying that Jesus Christ wasn't blessed. And we know that that is a lie. And people might say, well, because you're sick, it's something that you did wrong. And so that you're cursed. Well, that could be also is from the truth huh? because we know that Paul uh, had a problem with his eyes. Does it mean that Paul wasn't blessed? And this is the thing that we need to come out of. What happens is that when something happens in our life that we didn't expect uh, to happen, we start to look at ourselves and we start thinking, what have I done wrong? What is this curse that has come upon me? We don't take the time to give God praise in what we're dealing with because because from the moment it happens, we start going a little crazy. We start thinking that there is no God. We start thinking that what is going on here, God, you've got to get up. Because we were taught that when things are going good, that's the time that we know that the anointing of God is upon our lives. But that is furthest from the truth. Because Jesus Christ had to go through before he got into his glorified self. So does it mean that when Jesus was here going through what he had to go through on the cross of Calvary, did it, did, does it say that when they were whipping Jesus, that he was outside of the will of God? No, that is furthest from the truth. What we got to understand is that when God wants to take you to another level, you've got to go 
through your process. So when you see things happening in your life that you didn't cater for, it is not meant to crush you. It is not meant to defeat you. It is not meant to get you depressed. It is not meant for you to curse God. It is not meant for you to say, God, wake up. How could you be sleeping on the ship when the storm is happening? It's not meant for you to panic. What it says is that God is ready to take you to another level. It means that God wants to bless you and he can't bless you where you are because where you are right now, you've gotten comfortable. It means that things that is going good in your life, you're at a level now where God is saying you already understand that two plus two is four. You know that two take away two is nothing. And God is saying it's time for you to understand that two plus two is four, but I need to teach you that four plus four is eight. And in order for God to do that, you've got to go through a learning process for him to bless you. And that's why you got to understand when you're faced with calamities, when you're faced with a situation that you don't know what to do, it causes you to be crying because you're crying because your wife misbehaving or your children getting on crazy or your, your, your husband acting up in himself or the bill collectors are knocking on the door or somebody is sick. And you want God to come in and intervene. You've gotten some bad news. You've gotten something that sent telling you you're not going to do it. You're not going to make it. Maybe somebody have an exam to write. Maybe you're at work and you're being pressured from all sides. No matter what you do, they can't see that you're doing a good job. You're trying your best and your best is still not enough. They're coming at you and every time you're faced with this situation, you're getting yourself so emotional that you're crying here, there, and you're saying, God, where are you? The word of God tells you that in the midst of what you're dealing with, he said, right where you are, right where you stand, in the midst of it all, give me praise. The Bible says in everything to give God praise. Everything. And I want to show you something here. Because God has really been, really been ministering this to me. And I, we, we talk about it so many times. We say that we are Christians and we want to represent God in everything that we do. And, and that's good. But I want you to remember when God, Jesus came down here, he left his glory and he came as a man. And Jesus went through too. The Bible tells us that. So too did the disciples. How many times have we said, Paul didn't have nothing? Paul said, he said, I was hungry. I was naked. Paul said, I had nothing. I was so hungry, Paul said. I had nothing to eat, but I had to go into fasting. He said, I was shipwrecked. Things were going wrong in my life. Does it mean that Paul wasn't blessed? Does it mean that God wasn't with Paul? But Paul understood. And that's the place that God wants to bring you to so that you can understand that he wants to take you to another level. You already know two plus two. He wants to take you where you can understand four plus four is eight. And in order for you to do that, you've got to go through the process. He has to teach you. So yes, you're going to cry sometimes. Yes, you're going to pray and you feel like God's not hearing the prayer. It's this all part of your process. That's why you've got to give God praise. That's why he's been telling you, seek me first. Keep your eyes on me. 
and I'll take care of everything else. Yes, it means that when you put me first, I'll take care of your husband. I'll take care of your wife. I'll take care of your children. I'll take care of your manager. I'll take care of that promotion. I'll take care of that sickness. All I want is for your heart and for you to put me first. I want to tell you this. I don't want to strengthen and encourage you, encourage you in this. We, we, we say we're Christians and we want to be like Jesus. And we, we talk that talk and we talk it big. And sometimes we quote things from the scripture. But when we are faced with it, when we are faced to that place where you say, God, I want you to use me. God, I want you to have your way in my life. And when God says yes, and the trouble come, you buckle your knees and you start crying. And you start saying, God, why me? Why me? Don't you know that some of the things you're dealing with right now is because you lift your hands and you said, God, I want more of you. And in order for God to do you, to do that in your life, to show you who he is, you've got to go through. If you don't go through, how would you know the strength of your God? Isn't that what God did for the children of Israel? He hardened the heart of Pharaoh and the children of God, they cried out, but God had to do that so that God can show them who he was. Don't you know God wants to show you who he is in your life? You've got to wipe your tears, open your eyes and give God the worship, give him the praise, give him the problems. We talk about that. We talk about it. We said that we're a child of God, but now is the time. Prove God. Prove him. Take him at his word. The best example of that we always talk about him. We always talk about Job. We talk about him. When we say that, you know, I'm going through, I feel like Job. We like to say that, but, but God made a boast in Job. He, he, he said there's, there's none righteous, there's none God-fearing like Job. And, 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 and I'll tell you something, the enemy, the Bible says, watch this now. He said that the devil, was he came before God together with the sons of God. And the devil came before God and God said, what are you doing here, Satan? Why did you come here? Have you considered my servant Job? God was saying that like Satan was roaming to and fro the earth. He wanted something to do. And so God made a boast. He said, look, look at Job. Go to Job. I'm, 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 look at him. God made a boast in him. And Job never knew that. But when Job was faced with the calamity, and if you don't understand and you don't know the story of Job, you need to go and read the book of Job. When Job got the bad news, one after the other, after the other, the first thing Job did is he ripped his clothes and he worshiped God. That's what he did. He didn't call on anybody and went crying, crying and say, why me? And you know what Job did? He worshiped God. And you know what else he did? He said, God, you, you give and you take away. What Job did is he said, listen to me, God. I know that you love me. And I know and I understand who you are. I know that your intentions towards me is always good. So you know what, God? You're the only one to give and you're the only one to take away. So God, you go ahead and do what you need to do. I still give you the praise. That's the place that God wants us to come to where we face with situations and we can say, God, I worship you still. I worship you. Listen, listen, Job never knew that God made a boast in him. Don't you know what you're dealing with right now? There's a possibility that God made a boast. And he told Satan, have you considered my servant? And he called your name before, before, his, before the enemy. And he told him that. And then Satan said, well, I know they're going to turn their back on you. I know they're going to curse you. So let me loose. And what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? You've got to show God, listen, Father, I don't understand what is happening here. I don't know why this is happening. Because if I had to put myself in a place in the future, I 
never thought I would have been here. You see, God, I try to honor your word. I give when you said to give. I pray when it was time to pray. I prayed for people, children. I prayed for this one. I prayed for that one. No, I'm praying for my children and I can't see what is happening. I give to this one and I give to that one. No, when I need her, nobody's coming my way. But God, I want to tell you this, this evening, God, I love you and I give you praise. I worship you, God, because my strength is in you and my help comes from you. That's the place that you and I need to get to. Don't let the devil feel that he has control over your life and that of your loved ones. You're going to make a boast in God. Don't let no one tell you, well, you know, the life that you're living, it's because of sin. It's because God turned his back on you. That's not true. You may may really be in sin, but the word of God says, if you make your bed in hell, he's there with you. So what do you do? You wake yourself up. Like the prodigal son, confess it before God. And he was with his arms wide open to receive you. When, listen, count it all joy. Count it a joy when you're going through your process. You know what you gotta do? (laughs) Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. When the problems come, when the friends start leaving you, when they start bad talking you, when they start doing things that you didn't expect them to do, (laughs) Oh, my God, my God, my God. When things start happening in a different way that you know for yourself, I don't understand. I really, really don't understand. When it starts to, to mess with your mind that you find yourself in the night, you can't sleep because it's so much. You think, you think it's so much. You think it's too much. Lift your hands and say, God, oh my God, what are you going to do now? What are you going to do now, Lord? Lift your hands and that's what you say. Get excited when you're going through your process. I say, all right, God, all right. I am in the right place because God wants to bless you. That's what he did with Job. That's what he did. He blessed him because he learned to praise God in the mix of what he's going through. When you go through a process, you've got to say, God, all right. What are you up to now? Because your blessing is sure in coming. It is sure. It's not time to weep. Don't weep when the process comes. I know it's going to hurt you, but you've got to get up. Make that stand for God. He is, listen, God is rooting for you. Heaven is cheering you on. You've got a live right family here who's right here with you too. You're not alone. So this is not the time to break. This is not the time to quarrel and to to, to curse down the place and get on because it's demons you're dealing with. The battle is against heaven and hell. It's against light and darkness. All truth is parallel. You just got caught in the middle. But just remember who is in control, who is the one that holds the stars in the sky, who is the one that holds the sun, who is the one that separates the earth from the sea, who is the one that gives life, who is the one who says that I am. That's the God that you serve. And because you serve the God that lives, you know he already got this covered for you. He's already got it under control. We bless the Lord tonight and give him glory. We give him praise and we say thank you tonight. I didn't plan on saying this. There's something I need to say here quickly tonight, but the Holy Ghost, just have your way. You know, I just want to encourage you tonight. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The Bible says in the last days, the saints of God, that's you and I, if we are not careful, we ourselves will backslide. That's what the word of God says. In the last days, saints are going to fall away. You don't want to fall away because you know who your God is. You don't want to fall away. You're dealing with something. You can't handle it on your own. Reach out. Tell us, listen, I need help. God is so good. God is so good. Come on, people. Whatever you're dealing with right now, I want you to type in that chat. And you say, type it in the chat. And you say, devil, not so. I already got this. 
Because let me tell you something, you've got to tell the devil, let him know his place. Put him in his place. Get him out. Get him out. Because Jesus never allowed him to stay close. He said, I rebuke you, Satan. Get thee behind me. He couldn't stay where God is. He can't stay where you are. And he can't stay where your loved ones, where your loved ones are either. He can't stay in your job. He can't stay in anything that concerns you. Get him out. Tell him, get out. Get violent and take back what belongs to you. You don't cry. You, you Listen, listen. You take your marriage back. You take your promotion back. You take your health back. You take your relationship with your children back. You take it back. Whatever you want, say, I am taking it back. Make that declaration to me. Take back what belongs to you. Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus, 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 we give you praise tonight. Hallelujah. God is so good. God is worthy to be praised. And so we honor him. We give him glory. We give him glory. The most high God tonight. We call him uh, Jesus. We declare that you are Lord and God over all. Amen. So just to quickly remind you um, that the 1st of August to the 31st, we want to do a beetroot challenge. And we place that in the flyer as a reminder to you. And maybe you can also um, share it with others and invite them to come along. Let them see how um, they feel, you know, um, doing it. Remember, it's not big cubes. It's small pieces. It's like you get a small beetroot and you cut that beetroot in half and you can have it. Um, so you can probably have um, a half a beetroot a day. Right. We're going to try doing that because we want to we want to live well. And in all of the I have put in the flyers, all the benefits um, of the beetroot. If you want, you can check in with your doctor and let him know that you're going to do a beetroot challenge. And so because you're going to do it, you want to know if it's OK. You, you know, you want to double check with him. But we want to do that beetroot challenge. If you are urinating and you see your urine is the color of the beetroot. It means you're eating too much, right? You're eating too much. I have to sometimes contain myself because I really love beetroot. I love it. I love it. I love it. So we're going to do that challenge. It's in the family chat. And I also place it in the in the um, the WhatsApp Kingdom study chat as well. And to remind you, we start our exercise on the first. Remember, we are doing, we want a family. We want you to join with us three times for the week. All right, it's going to be Monday to Friday, so you can choose the three days that you're coming in. If you, you know, if you want to, um, to do it five days a week and we rest on weekends, but that's what we're going to do. We're going to start that exercise and for the month of August as well, and the beetroot in the month of August as well. We want to take care of our bodies, family, amen. We want to take care of our temples. Come on, say amen. And listen, we are not going to do anything that is strenuous. We 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 now some of us are now starting up. You know, we're gonna take it easy. We're gonna take it light. We're gonna take it nice. All right, and we're gonna we're gonna take care of our temple. That's what God wants us to do, and that's what we are going to do with the information He has given unto us. We are going to take care of our bodies. Amen. Also, um, I place in the chat, um, a the information I told you last night with concerning demons and their areas of influence, it will help you when you're praying. Maybe you would see people acting in a particular way. You look at the way they behave and then you are able to identify that demon. You speak to that demon and then you call the spirits um, that is influencing influencing them to behave in a particular way because we need to know how to do warfare we are no longer going to sit down and wait for people to come to us god expects that we ourselves can stand um, on our own and, and i spoke about it so those of you who are in the kingdom study chat make sure have a look at it those of you who are in the family chat look at it go through it and apply it in your life while you are praying one of them so what we did so we put the ruling demon i just pulling out pulling out of all just i'm putting randomly so the ruling demon of worry the demon who controls worrying he influences he influences anxiety and fear so if you start feeling fearful if you see someone feeling fearful then you say to them you you say listen you demon of worry in the name of jesus 
I rebuke you and your spirit of fear, your, your, your spirit of your influence over my life of fear. That's that, that spirit that influences fear and you come against it. And that is how we, we, we're going to do it. You look through it, familiarize yourself with it, you know, and, and let us make it a part of our prayer life. Those of you who are struggling to pray. So the, another one is the, um, the ruling demon of strife. He, he's, he's, he's operating. He controls strife. It, he, so when you see someone arguing, you, you, you open your mouth and you, when you're praying and you say demon of strife, I recognize your influencing spirits of argument and fighting. And I speak to you now and you stop it. And that's all we, so we're not going to pray anymore. Helter skelter. We're not going to pray all over the place. Now we know what we're targeting. We're going to hit the target bullseye and deal with it and not find ourselves fighting up and battling up and calling dealing as i remember what i tell you said to you before to the holy spirit that you might be fighting in the north when you're supposed to be fighting in the south so this is going to help you if you have any questions at all concerning that reach out please ask a question i don't know you know how do we do that just have that num num um, number in the chat again and another thing as well you don't always have to call you can leave a voicemail and ask a question, I will leave you a voicemail back. If you want, you can send a text and I will text you back because not all the time I'm available to take the call, but I will respond to you. Okay, so ask your questions, be on top of it. Also, I wanna say thank you all so very much for all of you who reached out, Dr. Richards and I, we were really excited. A few of you reached out as well concerning the hamper. So we're just putting things in place and we should be able to deliver um, to the person um, this weekend or, or so thereabout. Um, they will collect it. So we give God praise for you lovely people. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Thank you for loving and thank you for giving. Even those of you who um, may have wanted to, to give and, and, and had to, you know, put a pause on it. You already give in your heart. You give because you reached out. So we want to say thank you so much for giving on behalf of Dr. Richards and I in the ministry. You all really tapped into it. And from the moment we said that messages were coming, even up to this afternoon. So we give God glory for all of you. So thank you. Thank you so very, very, very much. God bless you. And once again, I want to say to you, each and every one of you, those of you who may have noticed that your name is no longer in the family chat. And some of you kind of Buffman thing. And Dr. Richards, the Buffman, you know, some of them else spoke kind of, you know, <laughs> because it's all in love, you know. Um, we were trying to clean up the chat and um, there were some people who wanted to leave the chat, didn't know how to leave it, felt a how to leave the chat, um, all different types of reasoning. And what happened is that we thought it was best, you know what? in order to really help people along the way. Because yes, there were people who reached out to me and said, thank you so much for taking me out of the chat, you know, um, because they wanted to, they were so occupied in their ministry and all, you know, because we know we don't have a church here. You are from your own church, things are happening. Um, so that's the reason why, okay, don't, 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 don't get angry with us. That's the reason why we, um, we had to do a little cleanup in the chat and we let people go. And, and most of you would have noticed we have how much, a hundred and some people in the chat and now it has dropped down so um so low so we are okay with that because people have things going on and they're busy with their life and they're moving on and we bless them amen nobody here is angry we bless them we give god praise and thanks to them so if you are on tonight and you um want to remain with us in the kingdom um study like we are having here now and you feel like you want to be a part of the other family chat and or you maybe may not have known and you're now hearing about it you got to reach out again and, and let us know and um we, because we want people who are in the family chat to want to be in the family chat and some people you know um their their their, their phones are filled up with so many followers they just sadly had to move on you know they had to come out they're still in the kingdom study but they can't remain in the family chat and so we love you all still and we understand we totally do and um we give God praise and thanks, all right? So God bless you. There are scripture verses in the chat. For those of you, even if you're here for the very first time and you see a scripture verse, you want to um, read a scripture verse, you go ahead and choose it. Let's choose the scripture verse, put your name by it. Make sure you have the scripture verse in place like popcorn because Dr. Richards don't like when he called the scripture verse and we have to wait because time is of the essence. So from the moment you choose a scripture verse, look for it. 
you know, and um, set it up. So when he calls the scripture verse, you know it's yours. Again, share the link. Tell people that we are on YouTube because the same way you are being blessed, we want others to be blessed as well by the Holy Spirit. So let us share and continue to be a blessing, one and all. I love you guys dearly. Thank you so much for spending time with us. And so we get straight into our kingdom study with no other than Dr. Noah Richards. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Holy Ghost, have your way tonight. Dr. Richards, God bless you. And we hide you behind the cross of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That even as you, the Holy Spirit uses you to teach tonight, we would hear from God and not you. You are just the vessel that he's using. And I continue to thank God that the words will come out with such simplicity that we will all understand. We come against every confusion, every wavering mind. And Father God, we say, have your way tonight. Use your manservant and glorify yourself in this kingdom study tonight. God bless you, each and every one of you. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Nicole. I see Pamela's hand is up. Is that an error or is there a question? Do you want to do you want to ask a question, Pamela? Just let us know quickly, please. I'm seeing your hand up. I know sometimes people put their hands up by mistake. So I just wanted to be sure that it's a question. Okay, it's done now. So all right. So good evening, every one of you, and uh, welcome to our kingdom study for this evening. And we are glad to have you, as Pastor Nicole says. You know, we have one family here. It's a, a, a love family of love. There's love in the house, as we usually say. And uh, if you're new to us, we just want to let you know we're here every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 8 to 9, 30. You can join with us. It's not a church. It's a ministry that God has started uh, with us. And we're just here to learn of God and to, to learn and to apply what we've learned so that we could be better and we could know our God. Amen. So we have last evening when we were here, we were talking about principles. And uh, what, uh, what are principles? Well, it came out of, it, it followed the teaching that Pastor Nicole did on clean and unclean meats. On clean and unclean meats, all right, and um, food. And uh, so, you know, some people may still think, you know, that doesn't apply to me. It doesn't apply to us. It doesn't apply to us in 2022. And uh, so the Lord had me share with you so that you will get a clear understanding because many things in scripture, we are not sure whether or not we should adopt it today or, you know, not adopt it at all. And so it's important for us to understand principles. And just to go back a bit to recap, I was telling you that there are two audiences. When you look at scripture, there are two audiences. And the, the two audiences are the biblical audience, who, whoever the book was written to, Genesis, Exodus, from Genesis to Revelation. Each book was written to a particular set of people. So that's the, that people. And then there's us, the modern day audience. And we need to understand what relates to them and what relates to both them and us. And uh, we saw that we are, we are separated. There's a difference between um, us and them by time, because we are in different time, different language. We speak English and they speak um, Hebrew or Greek or Aramaic. Situation, the situation might be different and it's a different culture. So certain things apply to them and don't apply to us. So, but there's one thing that applies to both of us, and that thing is called a principle. So we want to understand really what a principle is so we would know whether or not when we read scripture, if it's speaking to us or if it's there for information because it just spoke to them. And I told you that a principle is a fundamental truth or law on which everything stands. We looked at the meaning of fundamental, which is something supporting the existence of something how the thing works, the base, the foundation, the root. That's the principle. We saw that's fundamental, okay? We saw principle also means truth or reality. What is the reality? What is the real purpose? Job didn't know. Job saw all that was going on. But did he understand the principle? Did he understand the reality? What was really happening? Why this thing was happening to him? The principle. 
Okay, so we looked, we also looked at law. What is a law? And we saw that a law is a, a rule that has been established, a rule. And we all know about rules because we live under rules. Whether it's a rule in our own home, in the community, in the land that we live, or if we go to another another land, there are rules, we, and we have to walk within the rules. So the principle really are the rules, but we have to understand as well that the rules, when we to understand principle, is not just the words that are spoken or written. We've got to understand the the, the crux of the thing, the core of the thing, the thing that is really meant, or the spirit, the spirit of what is said. What is the spirit of the law? And so this is where we left off last evening because 2 Corinthians 3, 6 says, who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. So when you read something, especially in, in scripture, we see what the words say. And sometimes the words are harsh. Don't do this and don't do that. And we just look at it. Even sometimes with our you know, children and their parents, your parents tell you, don't touch this or don't go there. And all they're saying is the parents want to keep them back on these set of rules. But you've got to understand the spirit. Why is my parents saying this? Why did my mother or my father tell me not to touch this? That's the principle we're talking about. The core reason, not just the words that are used. And I was telling you last evening as well, the Bible, the book of the Bible is a book with words. And that has to come alive in you. You have to understand the spirit of what is written in the word, not just the words. Because even different versions have different words. So we want to move on tonight to how do you recognize principles in reading the scripture? How do you recognize principle? How do you know? What is the root? What is the intent? How do you separate the principles from other things? In other words, what did God really mean when he say that, when he said that? And when we look at the first commandment, thou shall have no other gods but me. That sounds like harsh and oppressive. But what is God saying? How do you know? How do you, how do you recognize what is said if that is a principle? Or if it is not a principle, how do you recognize it? So I hope you're taking notes tonight. So the first thing that you need to understand in finding out whether something is the principle or not is that one, principles are fixed or permanent. Anything that is permanent is a principle. Anything that does not change with time or language or situation or culture. It's like the foundation of a house doesn't change. Now, you may paint a house in green, and then you decide, let me repaint it, and you paint it in blue, or cream, or brown. That changes, right? But the root is fixed. The root is fixed. It's permanent. You don't change the root. Sorry, the, 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 the foundation. I might say the roof. The foundation is fixed. It's permanent because you can change the roof as well. You don't change foundation unless you're destroying the entire thing. So anything that is fixed is a principle. So you have to ask yourself, is this permanent? Is this fixed? Is this something that can be changed? If it cannot be changed, then it's a principle. I gave you the example of the sun. The sun rises in the east every day, whether in Trinidad or, or, or Africa, or wherever, because of the way the earth rotates. God put it that way. That is fixed. That cannot change. And you can pray all you want. You can fast for 40 days and 40 nights. That will not change. God put certain laws in place to govern the earth and the existence of the earth. So anything that is fixed is a principle. So, and it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter what you do. So, when God says something is unclean, you could pray all you want and bless it all you want and season it all you want and do whatever you want. It does not change the fact that it's unclean. 
unless God sets it clean. And God hasn't said that. So let's, let's take a look at something that is fixed in the scripture. We're just looking at a few so to give you the, uh, the, give you the understanding of what I mean. Genesis 1, chapter 12. I didn't give this one because I know we all know it. Chapter 1, verses 26, 27, 28, somewhere around there. It says, and God said, let us make man in our own image after own li our own likeness and let them rule. Let them have dominion. Let us make man in our own image after own likeness and let them have dominion. So God gave man, Adam and Eve, and us by extension, dominion in the earth. I have heard preachers say, many, many preachers say, that man has lost his dominion, that man no longer rule the earth. And I want to say to you that is not so. Man is the only established authority in the earth. God never took it back. There's no in scripture where God says you are not ruling any longer. Man still has authority that was given by God. You and I, we still rule the earth. If there's any way it's recorded in scripture where God took it by that authority, you show me. That's permanent, that's fixed, that does not change. That is why, no, the, because man is the only authority in the earth, that is why God had to come to earth to deal with man, to deal with the devil, because the devil tempted man and man sinned. And God had to come to earth as a man because even God himself as a spirit did not have authority in the earth. And I know as I say that some people, again, I remember somebody told me, you know, don't say that it's God you're talking about. But no, God said, let them rule. He didn't say let us all rule. He said, let them rule. So in order for God to do anything to destroy the works of, of Satan, he had to come in the earth as a man. And he came on the earth and, as a man so that he could take authority because man is still the only creature on earth that has authority. That is why God had to come in the form of man. That's why demons possess human beings. Because human beings are the ones that have the authority in the earth. So demons possess, possess human beings so they could control them. And you see the thing is, as people say, man gave his authority over to the, to, the, to the devil. How is that possible? When we did power and authority, when we did the, the, the series, <coughs> excuse me, on power and authority, I explained to you that you can give power to somebody who is greater than you or lesser than you. We talk about the cockroach and the, and, and the, and the, the rats and things. Whenever they influence your behavior, you give them power. So you could give power to somebody that's less than you or greater than you. With authority, you could not give somebody authority who is greater than you, who is higher than you. In other words, a sergeant cannot empower a captain or a major. A constable cannot give authority to a sergeant. A sergeant has a delegate authority and responsibility. So it goes downwards. And the scripture says that man was made lower than the angels. The devil is an angel. A fallen one, but an angel. And the demons are angels. So we can't give authority to them because we were made lower than them. I want to follow me. So man has not given authority to anyone. Man still rules the earth. He still has the authority in the earth. I want you all to follow me. I want to take my time with this. That is fixed. That is permanent. That's a principle that God has established. God says, let them rule. Let them rule. We still rule. We have given power 
to the enemy by, by, by giving into temptation. But we cannot authorize him. We cannot give him authority. We have not given over the authority. Now, I'll tell you this though. What we have lost, what Adam lost, and what by, by extension all of us, we have lost something called moral authority. Moral authority. <clears throat> and what is moral authority? That is, according to the definition of moral authority by, the, by the, the, the dictionary is, the quality or characteristic of being respected for having a good character or knowledge or to be a source of guidance, exemplar, someone who conducts himself properly. What does that mean? What does that mean? Moral authority, just to give an example, a synonym for moral authority is, is, is blameless, chaste, decent, good, honest, honorable, incorruptible, innocent, noble, principled. That's, those are the things that we no longer are. We're still in charge. But in other words, we don't have the kind of respect. We don't have the kind of respect that we are supposed to have. And that is why Satan can accuse the brethren. He can go before God and say, look what this one doing. And look what that one doing. Because of sin in our lives, we no longer have the moral authority to rule. Even though we have the authority. Even though we're ruling. And I hope you all get in this. Because sometimes it's difficult to, 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 to understand. Let's look at the scripture. Genesis 1.26. Genesis 1.26. Somebody read that for me. Okay, Dr. I have that. And it said that God, then God said, let us make man, someone like ourselves, to be the master of all life upon the earth and in the skies and the seas. Go ahead. I see that, Dr. Church. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Continue. Hold on, um, Dr. Richards, that's not, I, that was, um, that's what I got. So God made man like his maker, like God did, God make man, man and made, did he make them. All right, okay, I want, I, I, I'm not getting, I want to get another version, maybe the King James, the new King James version, the new King James, because what I want to, to emphasize, I'm not hearing it. The New King James Version. Then, then God said, let us make man in our image mm -hmm. according to our likeness. Right. Let them have dominion over mm -hmm. the fish of the sea, mm -hmm. over the birds of the air, mm -hmm. and over the, the cattle, mm -hmm. over all the earth and mm -hmm. over every creeping things that creep on the earth. Right. That's what I want. So you all heard that. God gave man dominion over all these things. The fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and over the cattle and all the earth and every creeping thing. We still rule. We still have dominion. But hear what? Those animals don't respect us anymore. You could go and pet a lion. You could call a bird and let it come. You could touch a snake. No, we still rule, but because we don't have moral authority, because of sin in our lives, the things that we rule over rebel against us. And that's the difference. That's what moral authority is. Let me give you another example. When I used to, uh, there was a place I used to work many years ago. I was a supervisor. So there was a manager, then there was a supervisor, and then there were the, the other workers. And I remember that every morning we came, we had to sign in this book, sign the time you come in. And uh, I was telling the manager, could you do another book for the supervisor, please? And the manager insisted, no. And the reason why I said that, because at eight o'clock, the manager used to come and take a, 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 a reading pen and a ruler and draw a line. And anybody who signed after the line was late. 
And I used to be late quite a lot of times. And because I was late and I signed in after the red line, you think I could go and discipline anybody for coming late? I had the authority to do it. I was still their supervisor, but I did not have the moral authority. Why? Because I was coming late too. And that's the difference between authority and moral authority. I still had the authority that was fixed, that was permanent. I was their supervisor, but I could not discipline them. I could not say to them, you know, if you come later next time, we'll deduct from your pay. I, I couldn't go and tell them anything because they would not respect me because they would say, you're coming late too. And that's the difference between authority and moral authority. So the authority, God never took back the authority. We are still the rulers of the earth, regardless of what people say. So man is still responsible for what is going on on the earth. All the wars, all the crime, all the pollution, everything. We are still responsible and we will have to answer to God for it. So we can't say, well, the devil roaming the earth and the devil made me do this and the devil and the devil and the devil. We are still rulers of the earth. What we have still is something called positional authority. By virtue of our position, my position was supervisor, and that gave me a certain amount of authority, but I didn't have the moral authority because I was doing just like that was coming late. And it's the same thing with us on earth. We still rule the earth, but we can't do certain things because we don't have the moral authority. We can't go and cast out a demon just so. We don't have the moral authority to do it. In Jesus Christ, when Jesus Christ came, he came to restore that moral authority as well as the positional authority. Do you remember when Jesus was walking across in this place and uh, the, 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 uh, the demons saw him, the, the guy that was used to be in chains and, 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 and bursting the chain and when they used to chain him up, and when the demon saw Jesus, they said, you know, have you come here to get rid of us before the time? Because they recognized his authority. They recognized that he had the positional authority and the moral authority to get rid of them. So they asked him, they said, listen, send us into the pigs. And he said, go, because he had the authority to do it. Other people couldn't do that because they were sinners. Remember the seven sons of Sceva? <laughs> we, 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 we adjure you in the name of Jesus who Paul preaches. They didn't know Jesus, so they did not have the, uh, even though they were men, even though they were human beings and they had authority on the earth, they did not have the moral authority to cast out demons. And that's what I'm saying. There are certain things that are fixed, and I just choose to use this one so that we will understand. There are certain things, but when we are in Christ, <clears throat> that moral authority comes back. That's why Jesus says in Matthew 16, Verses 16 to 18, somebody can read this for me, please. Matthew 16, verses 16 to 18. Whoever, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will sorry, accompany... Sorry, right, go ahead, yes, go ahead. <clears throat> accompany go ahead. those who believe in mm. my name. They will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people and they will get well. Ah, so that's what we're talking about. Thank you so much. That's what we're talking about. Because Jesus Christ came, those who are in him, those who believe in him, will now have not only position and authority, but moral authority to do the things that Adam used to do. I, I show Adam used to pick up snakes. I'm sure I am, Adam used to talk to lion and tigers, he used to walk among them, that sort of thing. We will be able to do some things now because we have gotten back that authority, that authority that we once had so that we can speak. Why do you think a man could tame a, a, a lion, those circus people? Because they're exercising the authority. Why? And, and, and this is what I wanted to understand. We will never... Um, removed from that position. It is fixed. It is permanent. It is a principle. The principle is you are the ruler of the earth. We are. Let me give you another example. And I said it to you already a couple of days ago. Whenever you see the word abomination in scripture, 
Whenever you see the word abomination, that God calls something an abomination, it remains an abomination forever. It does not change. God doesn't change his mind. It is a principle. Whenever you see the word abomination, the word abomination means filthy, to loan. It means something that, that is, is, is detestable, something aberrant. It's detestable to God and his people. It's like a, a, a dead dog, a rotten body. That's what an abomination is. Could you imagine God saying, that rotten thing is an abomination? And then later on, he comes and says, well, it's okay. There's something called the abomination of desolation. I don't know if you all remember that. In 165 BC, Antioch Epiphanes, he was a Greek ruler. What he did is that he went into the Jewish temple and he polluted the temple by sacrificing a pig on the altar. A pig which God said was an unclean creature. He sacrificed a pig. Now, as we know, based on what Pastor Nicholas has been teaching, God never accepted the advice of unclean animals. The clean animals is what you have to sacrifice. But he sacrificed a pig on the altar. And in the last days too, during the tribulation, the Antichrist is going to go into the Jewish temple and he's going to do the same thing. An abomination is an abomination and we've got to understand that. That's a principle. It's fixed. An abomination doesn't change. Once God says, it is an abomination. It does not change. Let's look at Leviticus 11, 9 to 23. Who has that one? Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying to them, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, These are the animals which you may eat among all the animals that are on the earth. Among the animals, whatever divides the hoof, having cloven hooves, and chewing the cud, that you may eat. Mm -hmm. nevertheless these you shall not eat among those that chew the curd mm -hmm. or those that have cloven hooves mm -hmm. the camel because it chews the curd but it does not have cloven hooves is unclean to you the rock hyrax because it chews the curd because but does not have cloven hooves is unclean to you the hare because it chews the cud, but does not have cloven hoofs, is unclean to you. And the swine, though it divides the hoof, have cloven hooves, yet does not chew the cud, is unclean to you. Their flesh you shall not eat, and their carcasses you shall not touch. They are unclean to you. Right. These you may eat of, all that are in the water. Whatever in the water has fins and scales, whether in the seas or in the rivers, you may eat, that you may eat. But all in the seas or in the rivers that do not have fins and scales, all that move in the water or any living thing which is in the water, they are an abomination to you. They shall be an abomination to you. You shall not eat their flesh but you shall regard their carcasses as an abomination. Mm -hmm. Whatever in the water does not have fins or scales, that shall be an abomination to you. And these you shall regard as an abomination among the birds. They shall not be eaten. They are, the, they are an abomination. The eagle, the vulture, the buzzard, the kite, and the falcon after its kind. Every raven after its kind, the ostrich, the short-eared owl, the seagull, and the hawk after its kind. The little owl, the fisher owl, and the screech owl. The white owl, the jackdaw, and the carrion vulture. The stork, the heron after its kind, the hoopoe, and the bat. All flying insects that creep on all floors, on all fours, shall be an abomination to you. All right, stop there, stop there, just stop there mm -hmm. for a minute. God took his time to outline every creature that was an abomination to eat. He took his time so that nobody could say that they didn't know. 
it's right there for us. If it was an abomination to them, it is still an abomination today. Whenever you see the word abomination, it does not just apply to one time you know, period. God is saying these things are an abomination to him and it should be an abomination to us. So all these seafoods that we like to eat, and, and you see, the, one of the things I mentioned is, one of the last things is the bat. We know the bat has been the source of all kinds of sicknesses and diseases. And there are certain cultures that bat is a delicacy. But it's an abomination. And we have to understand that. And even today, as Pastor Nicole rightly said, scientists are now finding out why. Because these things destroy our bodies. The body that God made when he formed with his own hands, it is being destroyed when we put these things into it. That's why he said, it's an ab he didn't just say, don't eat it, you know. He said, it's an abomination. In other words, I hate it. I hate it with a passion. That's what God is saying. I don't want you eating it at all, at all, at all. So all of us who feel that, hey, listen, I know what they're saying, oh, but you see, I still have some shrimp. <laughs> Let me just finish it off. That's like drinking poison. That's like somebody telling you, you know, that thing you're having in that glass is poison, you know. But to you, it tastes so good. I, I won't go drink it. I wouldn't drink it after this, you know. Let me just finish the glass. Would you do that? These things are an abomination to God. And if he says it's an abomination, it remains. An, ab an abomination. Now, there's some other things that I, do, I don't want to go into. Thank you so much, my dear, for reading. Because I know he went on to, to, to explain the thing that they can eat. So you can read it for yourself. I'm trying to tell you that principles, the principle is fixed. It is fixed. And God wasn't just trying to be, um, uh, you know, some people, they just like to throw the weight around. I don't want to do this. And I don't want to do that. God is not a God like that. Whenever God tells us not to do something, it is always for our own good. So when he said it's an abomination, he's saying to you, this is not good for you. It will destroy you. It is a stench in my nostrils. That's what God is saying. That's what a principle, when you study the principles, you will realize this is what God is saying. It is not good for you. It is not healthy for you. You will not eat something that is dead. You are not a vulture. You're not a kobo. Kobo eat dead things and they will live. You cannot eat dead things and live. That's why there's so much cancer in the world. That's why people are dying because we're eating the wrong things. Let's look at something else that I, I want us, really want us to take a look at tonight. Leviticus chapter 18, verses 22 and 23, and verses 29 and 30. Let's look at what, because I, I saw the other day where a preacher was coming up against this. And, I, I, you know, I couldn't understand what the preacher was saying. So let's look at it. Who has Leviticus 18, 22 to 23, and then 29 and 30? Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down there too. It is confusion. Hmm. And then 29. For whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, even the souls that commit them shall be cut off from among their people. Therefore shall ye keep mine ordinance, that ye commit not any one of these abominable customs, which were committed before you, and that ye defile not yourselves therein. I am the Lord your God. Amen. Let's look at Leviticus 20, 13. Who has that word? Yeah. If a man practices homosexuality, having sex with another man, as with a woman, both men have committed a detestable act. They must both be put to death. For they are guilty of a capital offense. I'm reading from the NLT. Oh, thank you so much. Now, tell me, what part of that has changed? 
where did God say, well, it is okay to do that now? Why is it we want to change the law of God? Why does we want to change something that is fundamental? Why does we want to change the truth? Why does we want to change the principle of God? God said it is detestable. It's an abomination. Tell me. I wish somebody could help me understand. Because the whole world now is saying, I, 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 just this morning I was watching television, American television, and this a famous star, not going to call his name, he was a guest on a program, a talk show. And he was a guest because a new movie, a new, I'm not, I'm not sure if it's a new movie or a, or a show or a series came out on Netflix, starring, he was starring. And in this, in this show, he is acting as a, 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 a gay man and um, who met another gay man and whatever happened, I, I, I don't know the, the storyline. And they're interviewing him and you know they're commending him. And I'm saying, look where we have come. When I was growing up, you didn't people who were, were, were homosexual or gay, they didn't want anybody to know. Now it's out there. And this man, he is being interviewed and he's talking about his husband. His husband. I told you all the other day about the, the, the basketball player that is in, in Russia right now. She's been charged for some drug offense. And her wife is, is, is you know, um, advocating for her release. Her wife, her wife. What did God say? What did the Bible say? He made male and female, made, made and female, he made them. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. And they too shall become one flesh. Where has it changed? Why is it now today in this age that a man with a man is no big thing? Or a woman with a woman? It is celebrated. There's a bank in, 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 in this country that is promoting that. I'm thankful I'm not in that bank, otherwise I would have taken out my money. That's me personally. You may not want to do it, but that's me. They are promoting it. But I can only say what God says. He says it's an abomination. Those are his words. And if it was an abomination, then it's an abomination. Now it's fixed. It is a principle. It cannot change. God didn't close his eyes now. He didn't make a mistake when he said that. He didn't say, well, look, you know, it's 2022 and people are a little freer now. Let me, let me, let them, let them free up their, themselves. Someone sent, was it, was it in this chat? A very famous singer singing and, 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 you know, in, in this nursery with babies and the boys had on blue and the girls had on pink and she was singing. And then all of a sudden she took something and blew something in her hand and it changed everything. So now there was no more blue and no more, no more pink. They were just in black and white. And what they were trying to say is that there's no more gender identity. A child can choose his or own, her own gender. Really? Really? Is that what God says? Isn't that coming up against what God has established in the earth? Do you see why Jesus Christ has to come soon? The world is getting worse and worse. You know, a, a famous American president that so many people love so much, and I and all admire him and, 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 and his wife. And I'm going to call names. Come on, people. Make sure your, your mic is muted, please. Everyone, please make sure your mic is muted. I remember watching something on television the other day where they, they celebrated. They had these people just outside the White House and they were celebrating um, gay pride. And, and they even um, the wife even inter well, interacted with one of the, the persons and said how she was so proud of her and that kind of thing. 
a famous president. So I am saying, and yes, the rainbow, they took God's promise, a promise that God gave to mankind, and they have made it their own, saying that everybody is a rainbow of colors, that we are all, you know, black and white and yellow and whatever, and, and they have all the letters of the alphabet. Folks, what I'm saying to you is this, and I'm not saying anything that, that again, I didn't make this up. It's right there in the word of God. You shall not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. You shall not mate with an animal to defile yourself with it. A woman should not mate with an animal. It is an abomination. If a man lies with a male as he lies with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. That's what the word of God says. That hasn't changed. Not in 2022. It has not changed. So we need to understand that when God says something, you know, I'll tell you something. Eh? I had a, a friend, a, a co-worker who was gay or who is gay. I, I don't work there anymore. I don't know if the person still works there. And he was one of the nicest person I've ever met. Really kind, caring. But he told me, point back. Well, I mean, everybody saw by him, his mannerism, we were guessing. And then one night, I was listening to the radio. I wasn't on air then, I wasn't on the radio then, so that's it, I don't know how long ago it was. And this particular station had a segment where um, gay people were calling in and talking about how people were treating them and how they, you know, and, and how they felt and that sort of thing. And I was listening that night. I was shocked that was, that was on radio, a particular secular station. So I remember the next day, I was talking about it. And I remember saying, you know, I, I, I'm now getting to understand um, how gay people feel. Didn't mean that I accepted it, but I said that. And he saw that as an opportunity to tell me, hey, I'm glad you know because I am gay. Well, I knew that. I knew he was based on his mannerism and everything. But that was an opening for him. Like he was looking for that all the time, you know, because they called it coming out of the closet. He wanted to come out of the closet. And since then, I have seen people the world over, people that I didn't even know were homosexuals, are now declaring boldly and openly, I am gay. A talk show host with one of the most famous and one of the biggest television audiences is a self-proclaimed lesbian. And all these things are being accepted by people in the earth, by people in the world. We, as children of God, have to stand against that. We have to stand against that because that's what the, the God that we serve and the God that we follow, if he says it's an abomination, then we have to say it too. And as nice as they are, as friendly as they are, and it doesn't mean we don't love them, it doesn't mean that we, don't, that we stop talking to them, because he, he continued to be my co-worker. We weren't close buddy buddies, you know, going on Lyme and thing, but we, you know, we interacted well. But his lifestyle is an abomination to God. And we have to understand that it's not about feeling sorry for anybody. Look at what they're doing to our children in the world. They are telling the children, now you have a right to choose. So you're seeing boys dressing up in, in dresses and wearing earrings. And I've seen girls cutting their hair and saying, I'm a boy. Folks, I don't know how to stress this enough. I know you all agree with me because we are children of God, but I don't know if you all understand how serious a time we are living in. And it means for us as believers that we have to hold fast to what we believe because our children are going to face that, you know. It has now begun. But this is the world that our children are going to grow up in because anything out there comes here, it reaches our country. So don't think it's out there only and that will never happen here and we will never allow it to happen here. How many things we said we would never allow it to happen? You have to understand that the powers that be, 
they don't only account to you and me, no. They have people that they account to. People who are literally pulling their strings. People who say to them, listen, you see this thing, we want this thing to happen. And it happens, they make it happen. We have to stand up, we have to teach our children. We need to be talking about this in church. We, instead of just talking about, 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 about ties and offering and money and all that, we need to be talking about this. Because the world is continuing. They're moving along, you know. Every day something. Every day you're hearing somebody, some famous person talking about, you know, how they, 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 they're gay and how they feel so free and they're allowing the children to do this and they're allowing the children to do that. They are doing it without any qualms. They're doing it without, you know, any apology. What are we doing? God says it is an abomination. Why are we talking about this even more? Why aren't we saying that? Why is it we are not raising our voices? Listen, right in the church, I remember when as a young man, as a teenager growing up, right in the church, I grew up with this young man. And he was my friend. This one was my friend. We used to lime together, a, a whole bunch of us. And then I remember one day, I am walking in for one night, we were coming home. And I saw him with some other guys. And the way the other guys were dressed up, and kind of, I, I couldn't believe and as he, and as he, you know, as we say in Trinidad, our eyes made four. As he saw me, he turned away, he turned his back. And I didn't have the guts to, 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 to call out to him, but I felt so sad. And that was then. Now I am sure if he sees me today, he ain't care. He ain't care. They have embraced them. They, they, you know, they have embraced who they, who they think they are. So I'm saying to you, it is up to us. We have to say what God says. If God says it's an abomination, it is an abomination. It doesn't matter who. There's someone who is very, in my sphere now, close to home, who I found out just recently, they're, they're struggling with their identity. They are actually struggling with their identity. I remember a couple of years ago, as I'm speaking to you now, it has just Come, come, I was counseling a couple who was about to be married. And one of the challenges that they had was that she had um, attraction for females. And I told them, I said, listen, you have to deal with this first. I spoke with him separately <clears throat> and he said, I know she's struggling with it but I love her enough to get married to her. And I, I, I told them not to. No, I'm not saying it ended badly because I don't know. I, I think they're still married. But the thing is, this is a believer. This is a Christian. It's a Christian couple. And she was struggling with that. So what I'm saying is, it's in the church as well. It's among us. You got to be careful. And one of the things that people do is that they want to influence you. Even though you tell them, I'm a heterosexual, I'm straight, they try to influence you to be like them. So they tell you, try it out now. They tell you, you know, you'll feel good. Just try it out once. But once is all it takes. So I'm saying to you tonight, a principle cannot change. It is fixed. And once God establishes a principle, no man can change it. It doesn't matter who you are, how nice you are, how good looking you are. And if God says that man with man is detestable to him, an abomination, that cannot change. Doesn't matter who it is. You could be a big movie star, and many movie stars are involved in this now. I, I mean, I am shocked. I am shocked at the amount of people in Hollywood that are, have same sex attraction that are either gay or lesbian or bisexual or transgender or whatever. But you see, it's out there now. You could Google that on the internet now. Before it was hidden, now it's no longer hidden. You've got to be careful, folks. What am I saying? Let us hold fast to what we believe. 
Let us hold fast to the principles of God. Let us hold fast to what God has said that does not change. It doesn't change with the time. It doesn't change with the culture because as you new culture, you know, no. The principles of God remains fixed at all time. It is forever and ever. The scripture says, no, and when it gave a list of people that will not inherit the kingdom of God, homosexuals is among it. So please, please, my friends, my brethren, if any one of you, any one of us, let me say this, is struggling with same-sex attraction, if you are struggling with it, we're not condemning you. We are saying, reach out. Please reach out. I know many people, I only named a few, but there are others as well who reached out to me. I could think of two in particular who reached out to me because they had that problem. Please reach out to us. You don't have to put it in the chat. Call me personally. Call Pastor Nicole. Reach out to us so that we can help you. Because God don't make mistakes. And if God says he made a male for the female, he brought, Adam, brought Eve to Adam, that's the way he has established it. A man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and those two shall become one flesh. Okay, so we're going to stop here for this evening. And uh, I can't, again, emphasize enough the importance of understanding principles. It's going to save your life. It's going to tell you what God is saying in this time, at this time. Not only what he said then, but it echoes right into 2022 or whatever year you're looking at this in. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, oh God, that even now as we look into your word, we understand your principle. We understand how we are supposed to live. We understand what is right and what is wrong. We don't go with what the world says or what is normal. We don't go with what has changed, Lord. We want to go with your word that has been fixed and settled forever. And what you say is wrong continues to be wrong. What you say is an abomination will always be an ab abomination. So we will not eat unclean foods because it is an, it is an abomination. We will not practice homosexuality because it is an abomination. You said it, God, and we are just echoing what you have said. And we believe it and we accept it and we will run with it. I pray for those who are in this family who may be struggling right now. I pray for peace for them. I pray that they will have the strength and the courage to reach out so that, God, we can help them come to that place where they ought to be. Father. We know you're a God of love, and, and, and God, you want to love us into the kingdom. We do not condemn anyone. We want to love them and show them that you still love them, even in spite of what is happening. So God, give them that peace to reach out. And give us, Lord, Lord, the, the will and the strength not to judge one another. Let there be no judgment among us, Father. And we thank you tonight. I pray, I cover your people. I pray they'll get, they'll get sweet sleep tonight. And bring us back again tomorrow at 8 o'clock where we can continue studying our work. Thank you, Lord.